Hello everybody, this is Budridge and in this video we start this wallpaper uh, manager project that I thought would be the topic for a couple of videos here. Um, and this this first uh, video here, we, we, we kind of uh, set up the project so to speak, uh, how we want to structure the script and stuff because this will be, uh, it's not a complicated thing in any way, but it will have a, a bunch of different functionality here. Like uh, we will set the wallpaper, toggle the blur, lock the screen, start screensavers and uh, things like that, you know. It will be uh, a larger project than, than we no normally do on, on in the videos, but whatever. Uh, and I thought, let's do it like this. Um, Let's uh, use the good old method, uh, write the documentation and then <laughs> write the program or the script. So that's what I've done here. I created a, a, a simple template here or, or a beginning, whatever. Top of this bash script, BWP, uh, as in most of my scripts that, that use uh, environment variables, I always declare them first uh, in the script. And here, um, the only environment variable I could think of was uh, a directory which we want to use as the library. And this is what I mean when I say library. This is from the i 3 lux uh, library that I showed you in the, in the last video. I also have the i 3 lux uh, source here. Uh, we can look at it later. But we need a directory that where we will keep all our wallpapers and, and stuff like that and, and the sim links and, and whatever. So we store that in an environment variable called bwpdir. And then I have written the, the, a short uh, help document or help string or whatever. Or what it actually is, is a here document. And here documents, let's take it extremely fast. Go to Wikipedia, to search for here document, and you can read about them. They are, uh, it is like, you know, ternary expressions and uh, regular expressions and things like that. Uh, are, they are common in uh, many different uh, programming languages and, and uh, similar things. And here documents are, uh, is another one of those, you know very good to just know what they are uh, and you can use them in in all kinds of, of languages uh, here they have yeah whatever they they look more or less the same work more or less the same small differences but whatever uh, and the way they work is uh, if you use cat to create an here document then uh, you write double uh, left pointing angle brackets and then you write uh, a delimiter string or like an end string so when eob appears uh, by itself on a on a line like it does here then it will end the here document this wouldn't work if, if uh, like um, like this will not work for example this will not end the here document it have to have this string on its own on, on its own line uh, it and you can name this the, the name of this string you can name it whatever you want there is like eof is very common it stands for end of file but i i don't know there's something i i just cannot write end of file because i don't really think well Unix philosophy, everything is a file. Yeah, but at the same time, this is a file and I, I, I prefer end of block, E-O-B. But you could, you could name this uh, end of uh, the world if you wanted to. As long as it matches the, this. But maybe that, yeah, well, whatever, you get it. Well, now it complains about something here. Couldn't find... To, uh, uh, yeah, I misspelled it. So, it's it's good to always use whatever you like, you know. EOB is good. And I write this documentation here. Short description, BWP, Bud Labs Wallpaper Manager. Then, uh, a usage uh, section here. 
on how to use this command. You can use it with these options, um, which takes these optional arguments, um, and it will result in these actions. So there are a bunch of main actions here. Uh, I demonstrated all of them, I think, in the last video, but uh, W will set the wallpaper, B will toggle the blur, L will lock the screen, S will start the screensaver, and A will just add a file to the library. And then you could optionally add a wallpaper uh, to, to most of these options. Uh, and then it describes what a wallpaper really means in this context and that could that is either uh, the full path to a to an image file or the name of a file inside the directory bwpd slash walls or if the r option is present then it will take a random direct uh, image file from the walls directory yeah uh, so I wrote that and then I created a main function that doesn't do anything and added some, some good uh, uh, help functions here that print stuff to standard out. That's what this do. Or, uh, sorry, it prints it to standard error and not standard out. And that makes it really good to print messages for either just debugging or maybe a warning message, message or error. I print that if it's a fatal error and then we also exit the script uh, so uh, good and also erh which is something i i just added uh, which will print the help message here because i store this uh, uh, here doc in a variable here called help message so if i execute the, uh, the function erh it will print the, the help message and it will print any arguments to the erh function and then exit the script and after all functions are declared i execute the main functions main function uh, passing all command line arguments to it so right now it doesn't do anything i can execute bwp here it doesn't do anything i can try it with with these uh, beautiful options that i say we can use doesn't work nothing happens because there is no logic in 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 this program and that's i'm gonna take it one step at a time here uh write a little option parser so we just can get started um so let's start mm -mm -mm. we could first do this um we have our main function here and then let's let's just do arguments colon and then dollar star so this will print uh, the, the string arguments and all arguments passed to to, to the, the command so now it says arguments dash ws could even write some some words here and those will also be included here okay uh, i think the best way to process command line arguments uh, in bash uh, if they are short is to use the built-in uh, get dots get dots there get dots is a shell built in so this is built into bash uh, and it have very good like bash support obviously since it is built in and i like to do that before we execute the main function here so one way to, to um, use get dots is to, to do it inside a while loop and I think that's the most common way to, to use it. And you, uh, to use get dots you write get dots and then um, the different arguments or the different options uh, this get dot is, is looking for and we have yeah the, we, let's copy this here so we remember them. Comment this out. So we have W, B, L, S, A. Those are the different options we have. And then uh, you give get, get opt. So this is the first argument to get opt. The second argument is a name uh, to, to use for each option. option. Let's, let's just do O here. And then do. And do here belongs to the while. So the now we, we create a loop here as long as there are command line options to process like this 
and right now it doesn't do anything you know but we could just to see what's going on here echo current opt is dollar o and dollar o will be yeah the current option i think it will be clear now if you haven't understood here it says current opt is w then it says current opt is s and then arguments ws the s some words you know that comes from the main function but current opt is printed twice here because it uh, it found two options on the command line uh, and dollar o is the current option i hope that uh, made things clear there but what if we are printing an option that doesn't exist in our list here like e for example then it says current opt is question mark what is this um, nice thing with get opts is that you can do things like this you know it's it's often supported with short options that you can write them in, in one single string like this and here you can see now it processes these as three different options even if it's written like this and it will even work with we could do this you know and that also works that's really that's one of the main benefits uh, using get opts and most of the time when you find examples online and I, I, I usually write it like this myself but I just f came up with a new uh, way to do this or came up with whatever but this is very common that you, that you create a, a case uh, uh, clause here to test the, 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 the value of O here and then you do like W uh, echo this is the wall paper option and then maybe we can do one more for lock or something and you do one yeah one test for each option it's uh, and then often have a default or fallback here echo what are these hello and the case here with the ESAC because that's case backwards you know let's try it now now uh, first it says here this is wallpaper option because uh, uh, W will be the first option it's, it finds here and then it also say current option is W because that's from here you know then it uh, says what is this hello because now it got the S we haven't added that here to the case blah 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 what is this what is this current option you, you, you see how it works and sure this is completely fine but it gets really uh, it's easy to, to, to make it more complicated than it needs to. When you add this case clause, you have to add new uh, uh, entries to this case list every time and maybe do some weird logic and stuff. Um, so I found this way instead. We create a, a, an associative array here. Declare a underscore O. So we create an array that's called underscore O. And then every time we find an option, we just store that like this. So, oops, um, O oh, is equal to one. So now it will set uh, an element in this uh, uh, array. The name of the element is the same as option. So if W is present, then O uh, W is equal to one and so on. <clears throat> this makes it much more flexible maybe a bit more cryptic but uh, whatever the problem though is that if we execute this here now you know uh, if we find an option that isn't part of, of this uh, uh, option string here then we get the question mark it doesn't know what to do with it and uh, this when this happens if we uh, enter an uh, illegal option so to speak then I would like to exit the script. Inform the user you entered an illegal option. Maybe also print the help screen and exit the script. And what do you know? We have a function that does exactly this here. ERH. Uh, so we can just make a test here. If O uh, is a question mark. And you need to put the question mark in, in single quotes here. I just... I have never done this prior to this video, uh, but uh, I just tested and, and it seems to work. Then ERH, uh, 
or we don't even need the quotes. Not, not a valid option. Else, add option array thing. Phi done. Now we will see that it will print uh, the help screen here uh, with the ERH. It will also print this uh, information here. Not a valid option. Um, and then it exits the script. We don't get the echo arguments thing at all because we had an illegal option. Of course, we cannot, uh, it would be nice if we could do this. Maybe there is a way, but we don't have to make this like the best thing in the world. This would be nice, you know, printing which option it was that was illegal, but it will just say question mark here. You know, question mark, not a valid option. So it's not much help anyway. So whatever. Would be nice if I if if it would still store the e here. What whatever. Okay. Remove the e and it works. Then now it prints here, you know, from the main function echo arguments, and it prints here all, all arguments. And as you can see, the options are uh, they are arguments, just as all the other arguments, of course. And this is the the other benefit of using uh, optarg uh, or getopts is that you can um, can fix this because we don't want to pass the options again here now to the main functions. When we have processed them, then let's remove them from this argument list. And to do that, we will use uh, a built-in magical variable called uh, optind. Uh, so if we do echo optind here, just to print the, the value of that variable, we can see here it says 3. Um, and our options looks like this, you know. If we change this uh, like this, we still have 3 options, right? But now it says 2. And if we don't have any options at all, says one and if we have this it says two so what does this opt-in uh, uh, number here really tell us well it tells us where which index uh, is currently uh, uh, it currently looks at or where the index is in the argument list uh, and this is only incremented here by get opts so when we don't have any arguments or options at all, then opt-in is one because it's pointing to the first argument. But here we have three options uh, and opt-in is three because it points at the third argument in this list. Uh, here we have three options, uh, but they are part of the same argument in the argument list and uh, opt in this two, meaning it points at the second argument. And with this information, we could very easily just uh, shift away the, the uh, options from, from the argument list. Uh, because shift, uh, it works like this. Shift uh, without any, the default value to shift is one. Uh, and shift works like this. If we would shift this uh, command, command line, then it would throw away one option, boink, and then this is dollar one, this is dollar two, and when I pass this as uh, uh, as this, uh, this will not be included in the argument list. If we would shift this with by two, it would uh, uh, remove both of the two first arguments. So now this is dollar one, and these two doesn't even exist. And we know uh, with this opt-in exactly how many arguments we need to, to shift. Uh, in this case, uh, we want to shift one here, uh, so so it will be opt-in minus one will be the correct. Then then we shift that way. Here we don't have any uh, uh, command line options. Opt-in is one, meaning we want to shift zero here. Opt-in minus one, and as you can see, the the secret formula is opt-in minus one will always give us the correct shift here. So we can just write that opt in minus one. Now there are arguments, some words. We don't have the W flag there. And if we try one with 
and more complicated still have the, the, the expected argument list. It removes all option arguments from our list. It's really nice. Another thing uh, we could do with this, uh, not sure if we will keep it, but we could do like an if, uh, damn it, optin is equal to, to uh, one, meaning there are there were no options at all in this list, and according to to this documentation, and this documentation is the law, you know, uh, there is no way to execute this this uh, command without any arguments. You have to have at least one of these five arguments for it to work. So then we could use this if, if opt-in is equal to one then there were no uh, options uh, and if that is true then we uh, send the, the help screen again to the user um, no options no action no woman no cry no? Uh, okay didn't like that for ah else but if we have more uh, if opt-in is not one uh, then we do our shifting five no arguments on words but if we test this without any options prints the help screen no options no action no woman no cry great and it also prints one here so we could remove this echo the opt-in and now we have a good good way here and, and this is a really nice boilerplate to use because you see this is completely independent of of um, any script basically Th this part will work for everything all you have to change is this list here of the different uh, options you want to use uh, so, so it's a nice, compact, dynamic way of handling uh, command line options. Only thing that I really wish that GetOps could do is uh, handle long options. It only supports uh, one character options like this. Um, and that's, um, that's a shame actually. I, I really wish they would add long options to get ops. Maybe in bash 6 or maybe bash 7 in a couple of years they, they have came to their senses. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Stop getting sidetracked. What time is it? 22 minutes. Haven't accomplished that much, but I think these, these things have to be done somewhere. Somewhere on YouTube, someone have to show you something other than which distro is the best at the moment, you know? Okay, okay, okay. Um, and now when we have this nice array here, which only uh, contains one if it exists, meaning we can use this uh, uh, nice uh, arithmetic test to, to, to do stuff with our um, options here. Let's do this. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we could even write it like this, but that is. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's equal to one. Then, and then we add one, two, three, four. Spyware, sublime. And we have W, we have L, we have Blur, we have Screensaver. And a default action here, Echo. And then we do a Phi. So here we can say uh, uh, Add Action. Here we say Wallpaper Action. Here we say Lock action here we say blur action and here we say saving screening action 
Some words get the help screen, doesn't work. Uh, test it with, with this. So now we have three options here, W, S and A. But this is what we get. Argument, some word, add action. Uh, if we remove this A here, we should get something else. <clears throat> Wallpaper action. And if we would change this to S, W, what we would get then? Wallpaper action. And this is uh, kind of an interesting side effect here, which I actually like in this case. Because the actions we, we want to do here, uh, set the wallpaper, toggle blur, lock the screen. We only want to do one of these things uh, at the time when we execute this command. It would be weird if we could start the screensaver uh, and lock the screen and, may, and toggle the blur at the same time. We never, they are like, there's no, no point of doing multiple of these at the same time. And that's why this is so nice with this if else thing here now. It will only execute the first found option in the list. And it shouldn't be used uh, with, with more. But if, if the user would enter more, more uh, options, uh, it will not break anything and we don't like have to uh, uh, print that many error messages. Whatever. I don't know if you if you understood what I meant there, but but it's 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 a good thing in this case. And I think it's better to handle this this stuff here in the main function than doing it here in the get ops because that means we can always use the same get ops here now for for every uh, every program. This is a good boilerplate in my opinion to to use when creating scripts. <coughs> um and then my, my, my thought here is to, to create like functions for like when we add, add a file to the library that will uh, execute like add file to library function and then set wallpaper function, lock function, blur function and so on. So we have a bunch of, of uh, isolated individual functions that will take care of the actions. But all, all of the actions, uh, even this one, even if uh, the argument doesn't look exactly the same, but they more or less, uh, or these are exactly the same type of argument. So, so we could, um, uh, could make sure uh, that we have that argument, which is, yeah, you, you know, uh, the name of, a, of an image, full path to an image, or the name of an image in the walls directory here. Uh, we make sure we get the path to a, to the image um, and then before we execute the action. So I think we do that in the next video and then uh, probably also start uh, writing this uh, add new image to the library. And you know sometimes we will have to, to execute even if I just said we don't want to uh, both uh, set the wallpaper and add an image to the library but uh, in one way we kind of do uh, in some cases, if we want to set the wallpaper to an image that are not currently in the library, then we can both add it to the to the library and set the whatever. It will be f will be great. It will be fantastic. I just thought I could show you really quickly how it looks like this i3 locks, uh, which I have been using uh, up until till this moment. Uh, here I have like the main function in its own script here. Uh, with all, yeah, I know it looks super weird. And I actually have the the, the uh, get ops and stuff in this file here, we are, where I also set the environment variables and, and some help information and stuff like that. It looks a little bit different, but, but the um, concept is, is the same. And then I have all function all functionality in in their own file like this and i think i would like like to get something similar with, with this thing because you can see some function here setting the lock screen which is like the the longest uh, <laughs> this is one single command you know <laughs> it just gets weird to have have all of this in in the same file and especially all of it in the same function so we'll see we'll see where, where we end up but uh, say thank you for watching if you watch this have a great day maybe we could um, uh, do this because why not um, because on bud labs uh, we like to recommend swedish podcasts and uh, today a new season of uh, meet rock mysterier have have just started and that is i think it is my favorite podcast 
It is only in Swedish, uh, so you have to understand that to understand anything. But that goes for many things other than listening to podcasts. Um, also, uh, Canonical, GitHub account, Ubuntu got hacked. I don't know who to blame here. Uh, who Hacking the devil, you know, is it angels? Is it God? Please, can someone simplify technology for me? I'm going crazy. Have a great day, everybody.